So this is now the second video in a row that I'm doing where I am not talking directly about entropy, but I promise I will do it eventually. It is a complicated subject, but I wanted to go on a tangent today to sort of rant about something that has been an issue for a while, which is the helium shortage. And it's the sort of thing that only comes up once in a while and people are like, oh yeah, this is actually important. And it's definitely a niche issue and I'm not going to say it should be like, you know, something in the absolute forefront of everybody's minds all the time, but it has become a running problem because helium is very, 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 very useful for a lot of things, not the least of which it is the only refrigerant that can get close to absolute zero. And that's what I've used helium for in the past as, as a refrigerant. And I want to talk about uh, mostly the physics of how helium is used as a refrigerant and why, but also rant a little bit about sort of the, you know, stupid politics about why there is a helium shortage. Because I'm trying to avoid talking about politics and stuff on this channel these days. In fact, I even forked a vlog channel so that I can, you know, speak to my heart's content about whatever and focus on, you know, sort of science and engineering and things like that here. But helium is extremely useful for so many things because it's non-reactive, it's lightweight, it can reach near absolute zero as a refrigerant, it can be used for leak detecting, it can be used for insulation, it can be used for all sorts of things. It is just a profoundly useful industrial gas. But the reason for the shortage is primarily because of helium's use as a refrigerant, and the big increase in usage has been from MRI machines. And that's a good problem to have, right? It means that MRI machines are getting cheaper and better, and they're becoming more available, and they're a very powerful diagnostic tool. But they require superconducting magnets, and superconducting magnets, at least any that are remotely practical, have to be cooled to temperatures that are only realistically achievable with liquid helium in order to operate. And this is where the sort of stupid politics of it comes in, where refrigeration, and this is what I will talk about when I promise I will eventually make an entropy video and explain it in detail, refrigeration fundamentally works by compressing some substance, generally a gas, and that compression causes it to heat up for reasons I will discuss in the future, but basically it's because you're putting energy into it, right? When you squeeze, you're doing work, and that work is adding energy to the system, and that energy becomes heat. And so that makes the system heat up. And then because now it's hot, it's hotter than its surroundings, and you can then dissipate that heat, because something that's hotter than its surroundings will naturally just cool off, because that's how heat transfer works. And then once it is at ambient temperature again, now you have something that's at higher pressure and density, but at the same temperature as the surroundings. And now you can release that pressure, and now it's going to expand because it's at a higher it's at a higher you know it's at a higher pressure than its surroundings, and you release it to its surroundings, now it expands. And now instead of adding energy like you did when you compress, now energy is being removed by the expansion. But because you let the heat out in between the contraction and the expansion or the compression and the expansion, it's going to get, after it expands, it's going to get colder than it started. And then, of course, you let heat into the refrigerant because your goal of running this refrigeration cycle is to cool something else off. And so then you take the now cooled down and expanded gas and you let heat in from whatever you want to cool down because that's how you cool something off is right as you draw heat out of it into something else and now your refrigerant is colder than the thing you're trying to cool off it draws some heat out and then you take the warmed up now the warmed up gas and then you compress you take it away from whatever you're cooling to compress it again and start the cycle over so in order to do that you need some substance generally a gas sometimes a liquid and gas, in the case of helium, this is going to be the case, to work with. And there's a couple of problems with trying to get close to absolute zero. You can never actually reach absolute zero for reasons I will discuss when I talk more about entropy. 
but basically, there's two problems to consider. One is there are thermodynamic limitations as you get colder and colder, and even helium can't get below about 2.7 Kelvin, which is something called its lambda point, for sort of thermodynamic reasons. But most things can't even get close to that in any practical system because they turn into a solid, right? You, If you reach to temperatures below what's called the triple point, you can no longer have a liquid under most realistic circumstances. And instead of trying to compress something and form a liquid, you'll just compress it and form a solid. And that solid will jam up all of your valves and your compressor and everything, and you won't be able to operate the refrigeration system below that temperature anymore. Helium, it does technically solidify under very extreme conditions, but it has to be very high pressure and very, very low temperatures. And so helium is the only practical refrigerant to get within about 10 degrees of absolute zero. You can technically use liquid hydrogen to get reasonably close, but uh, liquid hydrogen is hazardous, and it also can't get below about 10 Kelvin. And superconducting magnets could operate at 10 Kelvin, but it would be a pretty big safety hazard to have giant tanks of liquid hydrogen in a hospital. And for scientific purposes, we could maybe deal with the hazards of hydrogen, but we need to get lower than 10 Kelvin anyways. We typically want to get, you know, down to around uh, 1 Kelvin. And you can get down to 1 Kelvin with helium. But here's where we get to the sort of political and economic side of things. Like I said, you can use helium as a refrigerant, right? And you have, you know, a compressor and an expansion system just like you do in a normal refrigerator or freezer. So you can have that system and you can use that to cool down your experiment. And we call that a closed cycle system and it's just a refrigerator that uses helium as its refrigerant. Or you can basically do the equivalent of having an ice box and buying ice, where instead of having a closed cycle refrigeration system that uses helium as the refrigerant, you can just buy helium pre-liquefied from a liquefaction plant and then fill your experiment up with that liquid helium and then just let it evaporate and when it's gone, it's gone. And it's like, well, if there's a helium shortage, that seems like a terrible idea. Why would you do that? Well, that's where we get to the unfortunate politics and economics of the situation. Where helium used to be semi-pricey, and during the Cold War we had this huge strategic reserve of helium, and, you know, it was medium expensive, but so were refrigeration systems, and people would sometimes use one, sometimes use the other, but, you know, over the course of, like, you know, in, way back in the 50s and 60s, people would just buy liquid helium. You know, in the 70s, 80s, they started buying more and more refrigeration systems, and then the 90s rolled around, and... <sighs> I don't want to be overly political, but yes, a GOP Congress, but with a Democratic president. So, you know, not trying to pick sides or whatever, although I'm not trying to be coy about my politics. I'm, you know, definitely going to lean towards the left side. But I'm not trying to, you know, say which party is to blame. I'm just pointing out the short sightedness of what happened next, which is there was an insistence that we needed to get rid of our strategic reserve. And the reason for this, I kid you not, was... It was costing too much for the maintenance on, like, holding the reserve. Which, by the way, was costing almost nothing. Like, because it's not like there's some big metal tanks full of helium. It was all stored underground, and it required some maintenance to store it there. But it really wasn't that complicated. It was basically just some porous rock, and you pump it down there. And it, it's complicated, but it wasn't actually expensive to keep it there. But, like, it was just something where everybody, it like... It ticked enough boxes for enough people, and enough other people thought, like, oh, this will never matter. Sure, if it makes them happy, let's, you know, sell off the strategic reserve. And that flooded the market, it made helium dirt cheap, and everybody stopped buying closed-cycle refrigeration systems, and they started installing systems where you just put in liquid helium, and then it evaporates, and when it's gone, it's gone. And everybody did that for, like, 20 years. And this is precisely the period when hospitals started buying MRI machines. And again, that's a good thing. I'm happy they did that. But because helium was so cheap, they did not buy closed cycle systems. And here's the thing. An MRI machine, you know, probably costs like a million dollars. A recycling, re closed cycle or recycling system for helium costs, it varies, but on the order of, you know, 100,000 to like, 
you know, $200,000-ish. So, you know, an extra 10 to 20% to just not have to buy helium. But if you're going to spend less than a hundred grand over the course of the, the machine's lifetime on helium, why bother, right? And that was their logic. And then you're like, okay, well, if it's so expensive now and MRIs are so expensive, like, why not, uh, you know, just upgrade them with a recycling system? Well, one, it's not so simple. Two, if the machine costs a million dollars, then replacing it costs a million dollars, including if you want to replace it with a modern one that has a closed cycle system. So they haven't done it. And a lot of researchers haven't been able to do it because a cryostat is a lot less than a million dollars. A cryostat is like anywhere from 10 to 50, maybe 100 grand, usually not. But there's like, there a lot of physics departments and chemistry departments used to have like department-wide recycling systems where you would have your 20 grand cryostat and then you would take the helium exhaust and you know put it into a you know vent because there's all you know you're 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 putting the exhaust out through the you know building's vacuum system anyways and there would be just a separate helium recovery system in addition to the normal vacuum line and you just pipe it up there and they would have some central re recovery plant and you would you know send it there but they stopped a lot of departments got rid of those systems too because helium was so cheap hey why bother well, what happened 20 years later, the reserve started running out, and helium prices started going through the roof, and we started having shortages. And there was just this absolute absurdity around it, because there's not that many sources of helium in the world. And there are some applications where you have to expend the helium, uh, like a lot of helium leak detection and some other things, like, yeah, you're not going to be able to recover the helium. But when you're using helium as a refrigerant, there is absolutely no reason that you can't recover, like, almost all of it. Like, yeah, there's going to be leaks sometimes, but, you know, you also have leaks of, like, Freon and normal refrigerants, and we're pretty strict about controlling those because they're, you know, some of them are, uh, you know, damage ozone and others are just greenhouse gases, and we know how to, you know, there are still leaks sometimes, but we know how to restrict those leaks, and it's just, like, the absolute absurdity that we basically have a bunch of ice boxes instead of a bunch of refrigerators because of the incredible short-sightedness of people deciding, hey, let's just flood the market so that we don't have to pay the incredibly small cost of, like, just holding on to this and metering it out in an intelligent way because it's a really, really, really precious resource, like, for the entire world. But, well, c'est la vie. Anyways. Hopefully I'll explain sometime in the next month the details of how all these refrigeration systems work when I talk about entropy. All right, bye.